Hola, bon dia. So this week we're working with some free material we source locally. Uh, free door from our friends Joe and Bettina and free plants from our friend Maria. So join us for another labor intensive but cost free week of renovations. So first things first, our mains water supply was never buried properly and we could see the water hose peeking through the dirt when we first cleared all of the weeds over a year ago. So we're finally going to do something about that. So today I'm digging a trench. You can see all along the side of the house and then following our water supply hose. And the reason I'm doing that is because this is how well it was originally buried. So it's not even a centimeter under the ground. Light dusting. Yeah. So, and you can see it peeking through, which I'm sure is not good for the plastic. I'm sure sun will degrade it faster. So I'm digging down about 15, 20 centimeters and burying it properly. And that should prevent the water from being super hot in the summer. So this is what I have so far. Of course, the water is on top of the outflow for the toilet. So that's as low as I can get it there, but it's definitely an improvement from what it was. So I've put some flat rocks just to kind of hold it in place. I'm gonna throw some of the rocks in along here, just, you know, hopefully protect it a little bit from somebody digging, you know. And then I'm just going to fill it in. So it needs a little bit more work. There's a bit of a hump where these little weeds are. And I need to make sure that the soil is really packed down where I had the trough to bury the water hose. But it's looking much better. I've found a faster, easier, cheaper, and stronger way of repairing the larger gaps in the guest room door. And I also sorted out the hardware for the door this week. Speaking about the door, 43 of you have voted and the very clear winner is Teal with 74% of the vote. So when I finally get around to painting this door, it's gonna be Teal. <laughs> <laughs> so let's check out the progress so far. So the plan is to clean the keyhole cover and all of the parts for the doorknob with steel wool. And then I'm going to spray paint them all black so that they match. And hopefully, you know, look a little newer because I don't know if you can see that, but the doorknob is pretty scratched up. And this part here, as well as the part that goes through the door, is very rusty. So we're going to clean those up and make them look a little shinier. So for this part here, I'm going to use one of the uh, 120 grit sandpaper. 
because it has a lot of rust on it. And I've also noticed that at the very end here, it's crooked. So once I clean it up, or maybe before I clean it up, I'm going to try and straighten this out just by putting it this way on a hard surface and hitting it with the hammer. So we'll see if this works. That's a little better. So there we go. It's mostly straight. And this is the one that is rustier to begin with. Although, I don't know that this is metal either. It might just be rust from the metal part in the middle. Because this does not look like metal. It looks more like a plastic. Which would make sense because this is the handle that matches the keyhole that I broke. And you can see the last time that they painted the door, they got some of the paint on the door handle as well as the cover pieces. These ones are definitely some type of hard plastic. That will get them cleaned up. So yesterday I glued this piece into one of the wider cracks in the door because I figured it would be faster and easier and stronger than just using wood filler. So now I need to cut this piece flush with the door. Well, it was definitely faster and stronger. Not so sure about easier. So I finished scraping all of the old, I don't know what they used, out of the crack in the door. Then I'm using the wire brush to make sure that there's no debris left in there. And there's a slightly curved edge on the scrap piece of wood and I'm matching it up to the curved side of the gap and just making sure that it is going to fit and then we're going to add the glue. You put glue in the crack and you put glue on your wood Sounds <laughs> and it's uh, harder to do when you're laughing because the glue goes crooked. And you stick the wood in the crack. <laughs> of course you're not. And Make sure she's in good and tight. <laughs> Might as well continue. And I made a huge mess. I have glue squirting out everywhere. So maybe a little less glue. Okay. 
Okay. So this piece of wood is about the same height as the piece that's sticking up. So we're going to clamp that into place. Okay, so it's clamped into place and we'll come back and cut this piece off tomorrow. So far we have one side of the door completely finished. It is sanded flush with the surface. And just a few of the areas, like right here, need a little bit of wood filler, as well as down towards the bottom. But once this is painted, you shouldn't be able to see the repair at all. So it looks like this strip of wood was used to hold a sheet of plastic over the window because the window on this door is a single frame. Oh, and it looks like they had a few layers. So they had two layers of plastic to cover the window, you know, to winterize it. We don't have to worry about that because we're using it as an interior door. So I'll just have to patch those three nail holes after I clean it and then I can sand it and paint it. So this door is in way better shape than any of the interior doors. Actually, scrap that. It's in way better shape than any of the doors that were on this house or in this house. So I'm going to clean this door with washing soda and that will get the dirt off of it. Um, hopefully get rid of the little bit of a musty smell it has and also lighten up the color of the stain that's on it. But before I do that, I need to remove the hardware. So some of you probably think I don't really work because you always see Christina working, Maria. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been working on a retaining wall we're building for free, except for labor. <laughs> and the camera's jiggling around because of this little fart. What are you doing? Good morning. Good morning. What you doing? Sitting on my fresh wall. Your fresh wall. Of tires. It looks pretty good. Yeah, it'll do. It'll do. <laughs> so we approached a tire business up the road and asked if they had any old tires that we could take. And the owner came out and told us we could take as many as we want. Yes. So we loaded up the car with as many as we could take. And then uh, we started packing tires with dirt that we're digging out from the front of the house. Yes. So we're still working on regrading everything. And it's a slow process because we're doing it all by hand. So it is labor intensive, but free. Yeah. And it gives us beach bods. <laughs> So what we did is we basically just picked a spot that looked good, started leveling it, and then put the tires in and, and uh, packed them full of the dirt with our sledgehammers. And I pried the lips up and, and packed the edges so they're solid. Okay. So they're solid. And then you're stacking them offset? Yeah, we're, gonna st we're stacking them offset so we can actually put plants in between. Um... Yeah, because you can go totally, totally vertical, and uh, we're gonna do it. Off, we're doing it offset because uh, we want to put plants in.
What's growing on? Um, <laughs> just checking on my marijuana plants. Your marijuana plants? They look like peas and radishes to me. No, um, purple broccoli. Okay. Green broccoli, which never comes up. Oh, okay. Cauliflower, which yeah. only two came up. Um, cabbage, and mm -hmm. then peas. And then these I just dug out of the ground. There's some kind of melon we don't know yet. They okay. were just growing willy-nilly. <laughs> willy-nilly. And, and then we got a bunch of uh, grape cuttings from Maria. I'm going to try to root to add to the vineyard. <laughs> nice. Very good. So we're making good use of the cold frame again. Yep. It's getting quite a lot cooler in the evenings now. Probably, what would you say, like 13 degrees overnight now? 15, yeah, once 13. or twice, but you know, fifteen still. Oh, okay. I think we got it. I think we got down to a thirteen. Right. But that's about it. And then okay. this, this, all the radishes are growing. For I turned this and replanted radishes. Nice. So hopefully we'll get some radishes out of this one. Yeah. And then in another week I'm going to plant more radishes. Okay. And then the week after that I'm going to put in beans, so the radishes will be underneath. Hopefully the beans will grow up and shade them while they still can. Yep. And then I'll turn the beans in to create some nitrogen. Nice. And then I just planted chayote. Chayote. That we you got show from me? that we got from Maria as well. And we got uh, we got two green ones from Joe and Bettina. Yeah, which I planted over there. So these ones I just planted this morning. These are chayote. They're a, they're a type of squash. Oh, okay. Or melon. This one here and this one here. Yeah. And the other two I planted where the zucchini was. It's getting too cold for zucchini and squash plants, but if they're coming up free, then I'm going to plant them. Yeah, they were already sprouting, so don't forget to give our video a like, share it with your friends, and please leave us a comment. We love hearing from you guys, and we'll be sure to get back to you. And it also helps our channel to grow. And if you haven't subscribed so far, please subscribe. Yes. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this week's video. Take care, and we'll see you next week. Okay, okay bye! bye.